If you're planning on buying one of Intel's mid-range CPUs like the 10400F I reviewed recently, then you probably want a B460 motherboard. But that comes with its limitations, and so in this video I want to walk you through them and walk you through this MSI B460 Tomahawk and see how it holds up. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. B460 as a chipset is a lot more limited than its Z series counterpart. To start with, you can't overclock, or at least in theory you can anyway, and possibly more importantly, the memory speed has a hard limit. It's whatever the CPU is listed as its maximum memory frequency, so for these mid-range chips like the 1400F, it's 2666 megahertz, and for the higher-end 10900Ks of the world, those are 2933. But that is a hard limit. You can't, say, get around it by using XMP or try to manually set it in the BIOS. That is your, you know, very much hard limit. Strangely though, despite the B460 chipset being, in theory, a locked chipset, meaning you can't overclock, with the 10900K, I was able to overclock it just fine on this. It was able, I was able to set the multiplier, set the voltage, and pretty much any other overclocking setting you would want, all bar, like I said, turning XMP on for my 3600 MHz memory. You also get a more limited PCIe layout. In fact, only the X16 slot at the top, the shiny reinforced one, is the only lanes that go straight to the CPU. Everything else on the board, including both M.2 slots, your second X16 size slot, which is actually only X4 electrically, and pretty much everything else you can think of, all goes through the chipset, which uses a DMI 3.0 link, which is essentially just PCIe Gen 3 X4. Now in terms of the rear IO, at least on this board, it is pretty nice because you do get a included and pre-attached rear IO shield, and you get some pretty impressive things too. You get your usual USB port, 7.1 audio with the very common Realtek ALC 1220 codec, but you also get 2.5 gig Ethernet using a Realtek controller and uh, one gig ethernet with an Intel controller as well, which is pretty nice to see, especially on this relatively budget price point. Now, power delivery might be a concern for you, especially considering the absolute monster of a power draw that the 10900K needs, but you can rest assured, at least with this board anyway. Now, I can't make heads or tails of the, the setup here. It's very, very confusing to me because it seems to have two drivers our MOSFET drivers per channel, very different drivers. One supports up to 80 amps at 30 volts and one supports 55 at up to 10 volts. Uh, and then you have 12 inductors, but only eight capacitors, which, uh, and by the way, MSI lists this as an eight plus one plus one setup. And I just, I can't make heads or tails of it. Hopefully, you know, someone like Buildzoid might be able to enlighten us, but the good news is that in the real world, testing with a 10400F, the VRMs didn't hit more than about 50 degrees Celsius, uh, which is pretty impressive. And even testing with a 10900K, they, I think, hit somewhere near 70 degrees Celsius, but for VRMs, that's not all that much. The heat sinks are pretty massive, but again, that, that's not a high temperature, so I think that you could handle even potentially overclocking this if you really, really wanted. Suffice to say that neither of the chips I tested with were limited by the power delivery. They didn't lose performance because of it, but they did lose performance because of the RAM limitation. Testing with the 10400F and the exact same kit I tested with on Z490, which was a 3600 MHz CL16 kit. Obviously, like I said, the, the limitation here is 2666 MHz for the 10400F. And I saw a, an average of about 5% performance lost using the slower RAM. That's a pretty big deal, and considering that you can get more budget Z490 boards that wouldn't have that limitation, admittedly with a few less features and not looking quite as nice, but still, that's quite a big performance loss for choosing the, the more sensible motherboard option. Now, BIOS-wise, it is actually pretty similar to any other MSI board you can see, except for a rather grey monotone look instead of the more standard red that they use on their more gaming-oriented boards. Otherwise, everything is pretty similar though. You still have the very nice boot priority slider, and you do still have an XMP toggle up in the top left-hand corner, although it doesn't work, so I'm not entirely sure 
why that's quite there. Also the CPU and the XMP Profile 2 buttons are also hard coded there, but even when you put a 10900K in this, it still won't enable either of those buttons, especially the CPU one, which kind of feels like when you buy a nice new car and it's got a load of blank switches in the middle, it just feels a little empty and weird. In the advanced menu, you do still have a full overclocking page. And like I said, if you put a 10900K in there, then it seems to work just fine. You're able to save your overclocks. It works you know, decently well. But of course, if you put a locked CPU like the 10400F in, then while well, you can try setting you know, the multiplier, it will default immediately back to auto and not save, uh, which is kind of what you'd expect really. Pricing wise, this is a refreshing return to a legitimately budget price points. I've been looking at uh, B550 and Z490 boards recently and those prices are just jaw-dropping for what you get and so this costing £130 is pretty much right where it should be. In fact it's actually the same price as the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max which obviously you'd get if you were going with Ryzen and so seems a, a pretty reasonable price point. Now of course you don't get you know PCI Gen 4, you can't run fast RAM but it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. So should you buy a B460 board or go with the higher end Z490 platform instead? Well, it kind of depends on what chip you're going with. If you're going with one of the higher end uh, K series chips, you know, 10600K or higher, then I would genuine, uh, generally recommend going with the Z series boards as you're able to run faster RAM and therefore get more performance, have a bit more security in your overclocks, and it's probably a, a better suited platform. If, however, you're going with something like a 10400F, then it might make more sense to go with B460, even though you will have a bit of a performance penalty being limited by that RAM speed. If you can find a Z490 board for a similar price with a reasonably similar feature set, then I would probably go for that instead. But if your budget is limited and if you're really dead set on going with something like the 10400F, then it's probably the board I would recommend. With that said, I would still generally recommend going with a Ryzen 3600 or 3600X and say an MSI B450 Tomahawk Max instead, but take that how you will. With that said, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below about B460 as a, a chipset and obviously this Tomahawk board as well. What do you think? Is this too limited? Would you go with B460 if you're going with something like the 1000F or would you go with Z490 and just get a cheap one? Anything at all, do let me know in those comments down below. Otherwise, if if you want to check out this B460 Tomahawk Max then I'm going to leave a link to it in the description down below. That's an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and when you watch this because it can and does vary and I'll also throw in a link to the 1000F if you want to check that one out too. There's also a load of other things that you can check out in the description from Overclock UK affiliate links to merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, Patreon if you want to get cool rewards like ad-free videos and of course support me directly and there's a load of other stuff down there too. You can also check out that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday and you can also check out some more videos over there if you want to keep watching. I'll try and leave some uh, more motherboard reviews, perhaps B550 if you're interested, so feel free to check that out. Otherwise, if you have any questions, do leave those in the comments down below. We'll see you all in the next video.